Today we're going to be doing a little bit more chart work and taking a look at how you work out a course to steer. Imagine you're on this vessel and you want to get to this point up here. If we measure the course from the chart, it seems like we should steer 205 degrees true to get to our next waypoint, but look what happens. Although we're steering 205, the track that we're making over the ground is less than that. We're actually being affected by the tide, which is setting us away from our intended track. What we really want is to know the heading that we need to set so that we follow the track drawn on the chart. We want to know the course to steer. To start with, let's make a few assumptions. We'll assume our compass is really accurate with no error. We're also going to assume there's no variation and deviation, so maybe we're using a fiber optic gyro compass. We're going to get to variation and deviation in another video, which is why I don't want to tackle that today. We've also got to assume the tide is pretty much constant throughout our leg. It's just over 13 miles, and as our vessel travels at 8 knots, it's going to take us a little over 90 minutes, so I'm quite happy with that assumption. The final thing we're going to need is the tide itself. I'm going to tell you the tide is running at 0.83 degrees true, at a speed of 1.2 knots. There are loads of ways you can find the tide, which again we're not going to get into in this video. Things like tidal stream atlases, tidal diamonds, and there's all sorts of mobile apps nowadays as well. If you want to know more about those, let me know down in the comments, because I could always make a video about that in the future as well. Using our initial information, we can now go back to the chart and make what I call the one hour construction triangle. We're going to use one hour of tidal movement and one hour of ship's movement. The first thing we need is that one hour of tide from our starting position. We set our parallel rules according to the direction that the tide is going, so in this case 083. Transposing that back to our original position, we can draw a faint construction line on to see where our tidal vector is going to be heading. Next we need the length of that vector, and we've already said that the rate of the tide is 1.2 knots, so in one hour that's going to give us 1.2 miles of movement. You measure that 1.2 miles along the side of the chart, and then return to the starting position, measuring 1.2 miles along in the direction of the tide. This gives us our tidal vector, which we illustrate by adding three arrows to it. It means that if we were sat at the origin with no other movement, one hour later we'd have expected the tide to set us down to here. We don't want that though, we want to follow our track line. Our vessel does eight knots, which is eight nautical miles in an hour, so we're going to set our dividers again along the scale at the side of the chart to eight miles. We then return to our tidal vector, and from the end of that vector, we're going to measure 8 miles back towards our track line. As we used our dividers, we can just score across that track line 8 miles away to see where we return to our track. Joining all those dots together gives us that one hour construction triangle. This line, our original track, is what we will actually follow over the ground, is our ground track, illustrated with a single arrow. The other line is our water track, it's the track that we follow through the water, the difference coming from the fact that the water itself is moving. We use that water track to give us the course to steer. Using your parallel rules you can measure the course of the water track by transferring it back to the compass rows, and we find that it's 212 degrees true. If we steer 212 degrees true, because of the tide, we're going to have a course over the ground of 205 degrees true putting us right along our track line the whole time. One hour later, we'll be at the end of our one hour construction triangle, and assuming the tide doesn't change, we can just continue like that until we get to our waypoint. To find out how long it's going to take, we can measure the speed over the ground by measuring the length of our one hour ground track. It's 7.2 miles, giving us a ground speed of 7.2 knots. You can see why I chose the one hour construction triangle now, it just saves all the extra complicated maths, so we can literally read speeds straight from the chart. Next, we measure the total length of the ground track using our dividers and the scale at the side, giving us a total leg length of 13.3 miles. We take that 13.3 miles and divide it by our speed over the ground of 7.2 knots to find that it takes 1.85 hours, or 1 hour 51 minutes, to travel the full length of the leg. Of course, that only works if the tide doesn't change. If the tide is changing, I wouldn't do more than an hour. After that hour, you're going to have to work out the tide again, and just repeat that construction triangle and do those all along the length of your leg. Anyway, 
hopefully you've now seen how easy it is to work out course to steer from a nautical chart. For more videos like this, check out the rest of the channel and be sure to subscribe. I'm hoping to make more videos weekly, but I can't promise anything. If you're subscribed, at least you'll know when I post new content. Until next time, thank you for watching and goodbye.